Here we have a Lenovo Idea Gaming Y700 14 ISK. We're going to open up and explore the insides. So I'm just pointing out all the screws on the back. So as you may know, you're going to have to flip the back to remove the back cover. I already removed my screws in advance. So now I'm going to get my prying tool. With my prying tool, I'm going to pry around it, around it to remove the cover. Please note, you just need to remove the back cover to remove everything. As once you remove the back cover, it exposes everything inside the laptop. And you'll be able to access your hard drive, your RAM, and everything else in it. I'm just going to remove it off screen as it's easier to pry off. Now that I'm done prying, this is a bit weird. You're going to have to lift it up from one side and push it out as there's like a hinge type. <laughs> the cover actually curls, um, curls back, which I'll show you soon. So as you can see here, this hinge part, or the, the part close to the hinge of the plastic, curls back. So when you put it back in, you have to put that part in first. So here we go, the battery, two RAM slots, DDR4, so that's maximum of 32 gigs. This is graphic card, underneath it is the graph, uh, graph card, here's the CPU, here's fan 1, fan 2, your heatsink, air comes out that way, so if you have dust build up, it's there, so those are the two speakers. This is your hard drive, 2.5 inch hard drive your M.2 SSD, your wireless card. So now we're going to remove the RAM. So you pinch two sides out and the RAM pops up. So this laptop here is using DDR4. As I said, there's two slots. So therefore maximum of 32 gigs, 16 gigs in each slot. Next, we're going to remove the 2.5 inch hard drive. You can remove the, this is the hard drive cable. So you don't have to remove it first if you don't want it. You can actually remove the hard drive, it actually makes it easier. There's four screws holding the hard drive down. One of the screws is, actually goes under there, is the same screw that the heat sink uses. And so the hard drive cage actually goes underneath it, so it's a bit weird. If you have the laptop in front of you, you'll see. Just remember to slide it out, and when you put it put back your hard drive, you can slide it back in the that slot first or that hole first. So now that we remove all the screws, here we go. So next, this is the M.2 SSD. There's one screw holding it down. This is 80 millimeters long, which is what all, most M.2 SSDs are. So after you move one screw, it pops up like the RAM. And you can drag it out. So we're going to remove the wireless card. There's one screw holding the wireless card down. After you remove the wireless card screw, the wireless card pops up like the RAM. So now that <coughs> you remove the screw, you can remove it. Next, we're going to remove the heatsink. So there's a few screws on the heatsink that we need to remove to remove the heatsink. Please note, the graphic card and CPU is soldered on 
So removing the heatsink, you can only replace the thermal paste. And when you remove the heatsink, you must rep replace the thermal paste. So don't remove the heatsink if you don't have um, thermal paste to reapply. Removing the heatsink, there's actually numbers next to each screw. These numbers tell you what screw to screw in first, so that the um, thermal paste spreads out evenly. I'll show you the numbers later when I lift it up. So here we go. This is the heating. So we're gonna have to clean off the, both those. And we need to clean off the CP, uh, CPU and graphic card. These are the thermal pads and underneath the thermal pads there's RAM for your graphic card there. You don't need to replace your thermal pad, just leave it. So I'm going to just use tissue, and that's it, to clean off the thermal paste. You don't need any special alcohols, liquids, or solutions to do it. Most of the time, just tissue is fine. The idea is just try to get it clean as possible. You don't need it to be 100% clean. Try not to use tissue, as tissue breaks down. It's better if you can use a cloth, but I don't have a cloth, so I'm using tissue. So the idea is um, to clean the top part, the shiny part. The sides aren't that important if you if you can't clean it 100%. So here's the heatsink. I cleaned it off screen as it's a lot easier. So here I'll show you the numbers on the screw holes. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So with thermal paste, don't be cheap. I'm using Arctic Silver 5 or Noctua NTH1. It costs around $10 Australian for a tube, and one tube lasts you 15 times. Heatsink's really important. Sorry, thermal paste is really important, so don't be cheap on it. So with thermal paste, you just want to put half a rice grain on each chip in the center. And when we put the heatsink back on and screw in the numbers correctly, it will spread out the thermal paste evenly. So you just want to place the heatsink over the top without squishing it down. You want to spread it out with the screws not with your hand or force on the heatsink. Now we're going to remove the battery. There's a few screws holding it, the battery down. I'm pointing it out to you now.
So to remove the battery, you actually slide it left or right, and it comes off the clips, and remove the cable. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see the model number of the battery in case you need to buy a replacement battery. This here is the BIOS battery. If you need to replace it, it's actually under your battery, so you have to remove your battery just to get to it. Now that um, everything is done, I'm going to reassemble it. So if you don't need to watch anymore, thanks for watching and have a nice day.